Hi, I'm Lachlan Tui, one of the developers for the Katami project. I've been working on the import code, which I'll cover how to use in this video. So in this I'll take you through creating a campaign, importing an AUV deployment from the data fabric or other website, and importing Brav deployments from Excel spreadsheets before finishing with an import of some CPC annotation data for the AUV deployment we'll import. So this is the starting page for the Katami website, so if we click the import data button, it'll take us through to the import area. So the first thing to do from here is uh, create a campaign. So click on the link. Now in here, uh, creating a campaign has a few parameters, most of which are currently freeform text fields. The main thing to be aware of is that if using AUV deployments, the short name should match the folder name that was used for, those uh, for that campaign. So here, we'll create some a campaign for Tasmania 2009-06. So you can just fill in the details. As you see fit. And then a date. So the date here is more used for recording purposes, it isn't critical to get it exactly right. However, the more accurate data you have, the better. So now we just click Create, and the campaign has been created successfully. So if we go back now to importing the data, we can then do an AUV deployment import. So this will import AUV data from a website. Uh, at the moment we're using the data fabric, and so here you can see with the option of selecting campaign. At the moment, there's only one campaign in the database. So that's been 2009-06. We have a mission name, which is the folder name used for the AUV mission. And of course, the base URL, which at the moment, as I said, points to the AUV data on the data fabric. Although, if this was hosted on a different website, you could easily change this from the default to point to there and import from there instead. So I'll move across now to the data fabric website. So here we have all the AUV data. So you can see Tasmania 2009-06. If we click on this link, it will hopefully bring up a list of all the missions. So from within here, if we're picking a mission to import, we'll go with this Phrase and A mission. Yeah. So in here, the important folders or files is a HydroNet CDF, which contains the salinity and other scientific data, also the metadata that people might want to search on. The GeoTIFF folder contains all of the uh, images with embedded ge well, geospatial information and the track files contains the positions of the stereo cameras for each uh, image pair. And so those are the files of importance but what all we need to do here is just get, so I just copied the text of the mission folder name and we move back now to the Kotami website, paste this in the mission name and then click import. I will just wait for the Kotami website to download the track file, the NetCDF file, and then do the importing. So importing itself takes a while, and the progress bar doesn't actually work yet. So I'll just jump now to the complete page that shows after this has been imported. Alright, so here's the AUV import completion page, so it's been a success. So if we move from here now, back to the import data. So the manual option is an alternative version of the deployment import where you can manually specify the net CDF and track files. Uh, this is useful if there's been a, a re-navigation of that mission and it hasn't been propagated through to the place where the image is already hosted. So you can manually specify those URLs. The JSON pre-processed file upload as more of an internal development tool, though we may end up releasing proce uh, processing tools that can then convert data into this format and then be used here. However, it's very dependent on the internal database format and quite fragile, so it's not suggested. The next bit is the metadata file staging. So this can import data from Excel spreadsheets into deployments, and it can optionally do AUV, Toad imagery, Toad Video, Dove, and Brov, though it's more targeted at the video-based formats, such as the Dove, Brov, and Toad Video. So if you go in here, it's so here's the metadata file upload. This is designed to import Excel files, either the old or new formats. So to properly import the data, it is expected that you have a single row for column headings, 
followed by a number of rows, with each row representing a single deployment. As the text here denotes, so there's a template that can be accessed through this hyperlink that will give you a base format that you can then use to import your own data from, and it contains the fields used for a basic deployment without the specialist ones that are used in Dove, Sprubs, or other deployment types. So here, if we click on Browse, you can select a file from your computer. So here we've gone and found some Ningaloo Bruv data that I've got. This has been cleansed to remove some of the uh, parameters that weren't working. Here we'll make this public. Enter a description of Ningaloo Bruv's cleansed. So now that the data's been imported, we're taken to the metadata file list, and we can see the file that we've just imported. So here we've noted it's public, which can be changed here as well. And then the actions we can do is look at the info, which then leads us through the importing process, or delete the file itself after we've finished with it. So you can also access public files that other people have shared. But here we'll go and look at the info about this file. So here it lists all of the sheets inside the spreadsheet, and the titles, as well as the columns that have been recognized within it. So the main process of pro that, the main purpose of all of this is to know so that you can see that it's going to import the file correctly. So you can upload, check it out before actually doing the import. So here we'll look at importing from the offshore bruvs coordinates. So we're in preview. This then brings up a copy of the spreadsheet so with the columns slightly rearranged, but the information displayed in the format it'll be imported in. So you can see the times, latitude, longitude and that are all stored here. So you can import, uh, as this metadata doesn't have a specific destination deployment, you're going to select which one you want, it won't automatically recognize it for you. So at this point, we can import as Toad Video, Brav, Diver Operated Video, or Toad Imagery, and so we'll import from the Bravs. This then brings up the option to say which columns you want to pull bits of data from, or use a constant value for all deployments in the file. So here we're going to pass latitude and longitude out of their respective columns and the start timestamp and end timestamp we'll be getting. So with these, it obviously doesn't matter if you pull from different columns, it'll extract only the time components or date components in the case of timestamps. So the short name needs to be unique as does the start date for most of these or the combination needs to be unique. So here we'll use the bruv ID as the short name but it can essentially be anything. Uh, the mission aim here will just use a constant value. And then the depth. So you can reuse a column, of course, in multiple fields in the database, if it makes sense. And finally, the campaign. So at the moment, we'll import this into that Tasmania campaign as well, even though it is a different campaign. But it means you can import from multiple deployments into a single, multiple sets of deployments into a single campaign. So we click import, metadata import was success. So now we'll go back, and the final step is looking at the CPC annotations. So we'll select the CPC files. So a moment ago, we had a whole lot of CPC files, or we imported an AV deployment, and we'll now get the CPC files relating to that deployment. So you literally select, just select all of the files, select them, select the deployment we're going to target, so it's filtered out to AUV here, and then a user. At the moment, the user doesn't mean much, but with increased user permissions and more users coming online, we'll start to make this more important and have groups and organizations represented within that structure as well. So we now click Import, and in the background here, it'll do the importing of the CPC labels, attaching them to the relevant stereo pairs, and completing. And so this is the final part of the Katami importing video. Uh, I hope it's been relatively easy to understand and follow, and we'll see you importing your own data shortly. Thank you.